Was Echo any good? Did the show actually suck? Or was it potentially a great show that was strangled by the MCU system? I am excited to talk about the show today. Welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and let's talk about the Marvel series Echo. A little later, I'm gonna be joined by Colton Ogburn and Heather Antos, but first, here's my take. I wanna start with what was great about this show. Like, the show was not perfect, and I do have complaints that I'm gonna talk about later in the video, but there was a lot to love here, especially in those first three episodes. First of all, I am very excited for this corner of the MCU to come to life. I I love the dark and gritty street corner from the comics. I binged all the Netflix shows the day they came out, except for Iron Fist season two. And I am overjoyed that Vincent D'Onofrio's Wilson Fisk is officially part of the MCU. And that is why we made this Return of the King shirt for sale now in our merch store, ScreenCrushMerch.com, where we design all the merch ourselves. Guys, shopping our merch store is the best way for you to directly support our channel. We also have this Nelson and Murdoch shirt with the vigilante holding the scales of justice, the Nelson and Murdoch Law and Order shirt, the Echo Sign Language shirt, and of course, Doug as Dan. Daredevil. And coming up soon, we have our very first Screen Crush live show on February 22nd in Brooklyn, New York. Buy tickets to meet the team, see exclusive videos. It's going to be a great time. Links are below. Now, I will say that for a series that is supposedly TVMA, come on, there wasn't anything that bad in this. It could have gone way further in a lot of different aspects. So like, I do think a lot of the MCU has become like cookie cutter. Similar styles, similar VFX, similar endings. And this house style is making their stories become predictable. I think a little bit later, Colton's going to have a lot to say about the ending. Opening up a different corner of the MCU like this should let filmmakers unleash their creativity. Like I'll talk about in a bit, the show could have been great if it had the time to get weird. And I'm telling you guys, the potential for the show to be great was there because in those first three episodes, these fight scenes are amazing, particularly the episode one fight in Maya's first mission. In fact, in our Easter egg video, we broke down every nuance of that fight and especially how it was made to look like a famous single take shot from the Daredevil show. Or there was the fight in the skating rink where we go from Maya being this predator in the dark to this inventive fight choreography using arcade machines. And one thing this show definitely got right was Maya. From her first scene on, I related to this character. I rooted for her and I empathized with what she wanted. Like that may seem like a low bar, but I think a lot of shows like The Book of Boba Fett or even Secret Invasion, those narratives did a bad job of explaining exactly what the hell the protagonist wanted. Hey Doug, I'm gonna have some lunch. You want some? Person? Did you just straight up drink mouthwash? I really did, yeah. And it wasn't a fake out, like that's that's not Kool-Aid in the bottle, it's not watered down or anything? No, it was the real thing. Person, you gotta start eating better. I know, Doug. And that's why I'm gonna eat this delicious, nutritious, ready-to-eat meal from Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and the sponsor of this video. Wow, that smells amazing. Thanks, man. This is actually a creamy pork tenderloin with celery root cauliflower mash and broccoli. Jeez, and you didn't make that yourself? No, I could have never made this myself because I'm a terrible cook. And that is one thing I love about Factor. I get sent all this food that I would never be able to cook myself. Plus, it's healthy. Factor makes it easy to eat a balanced diet because their chefs work hand in hand with dietitians to create more than 34 chef prepared meals. You can tailor meals to fit your lifestyle, keto, vegan, or if you're trying to bulk up for your New Year's resolutions, they have a protein plus selection with 30 more grams of protein or more per serving. Plus guys, this food is delicious. Factor Meals lets you skip the grocery store. They are delivered straight to your front door, always fresh, never frozen, and the meals are ready in just two minutes and are only around 550 calories per serving. Plus, it is way, way cheaper than takeout. So I've been using Factor for a little over a year now, and I cannot believe how much this has improved my life. I'm eating better, and that's made such a noticeable difference in my day-to-day -day life. For instance, there are days when I get so busy, I just normally would forget to eat, and I would do something dumb, like chug mouthwash just to abate the growing hunger within my soul. But now, Factor Meals help me to get through my day with no hassle, no mess, no prep, just delicious food. So guys, you have to give Factor a try. Head to Factor75.com and use my promo code ScreenCrush50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. So back to Echo. I also loved how they wove in the footage from Hawkeye. And look, a lot of people I know didn't care for this, saying that it made the episode feel disjointed, like it was over-edited. But like, I don't think a lot of people remember the show Hawkeye. I don't think a lot of people watched the show Hawkeye, which is a shame because in hindsight, it's definitely one of the better Disney Plus Marvel shows. So people need that recap. And this opening sequence shows the events of Hawkeye from Maya's point of view, making us take a different perspective on that show. And it provides a great jumping on point for new viewers. So I think that as Marvel and Star Wars storytelling becomes more and more expansive, we're going to need more of these kind of quick catch up for viewers. For instance, like the show Ahsoka, if you didn't watch it, I'm not going to give any spoilers or anything, but the show Ahsoka drew from a lot of back 
backstory. There was six movies, eight movies actually, seven seasons of Clone Wars, four seasons of Rebels, not to mention the Mandalorian seasons and the Book of Boba Fett. And the show tried to fill in those gaps with like quick expository dialogue. Anakin never got to finish my training. Before the end of the Clone Wars, I walked away from him. Whereas, like, a quick origin episode could have recapped those events, maybe refilmed some animated stuff in live action, and that would have caught the viewer up nicely and, like, kept the narrative flow going. I mean, like, at this point, the MCU can no longer expect people to have watched every second of their programming. Like, when Hulk's son Scar shows up in Young Avengers, people are going to be confused where this, like, mini Hulk with the bad haircut came from. So I think that Echo's intro sequence is definitely going to be the way forward. And by the way, the actual Echo opening credits are fantastic, top-notch, some of the best that Marvel has ever produced. But where the show really excelled was its inventive use of these flashbacks. Like, I love that they did not over-explain the creation story or say that Maya is descended from aliens or something like that. There was also the scale of the Choctaw village in the Middle Ages. That was incredible. Like, I actually wanted to see more of this in this show, but again, I'm going to save my complaints for a bit later. And I just have to once again praise Vincent D'Onofrio. Like, from his very first scene as Fisk in the Daredevil show, he invests this character with so much nuance. Like, in the animated series and the original Daredevil movie, we always see Kingpin as this like arrogant, larger than life character. But D'Onofrio said he reduced him to just three words, monster and child. This is a man who is desperate to be loved because he knows that he is unlovable. Every second of him on screen is a gift. However, the guy does have to win at some point. What do you mean by that? I mean, he keeps losing. Daredevil beats him in two seasons of the show. Kate Bishop beats him in Hawkeye. Maya beats him twice. He's like Kang, like the dude went 0 for 2, so it's just hard to take him seriously. Marvel needs their villains to win, so we'll actually perceive them as threats. So Colton, what do you think? You know, you've written a couple of the Easter egg videos we did for the show. What are your thoughts on the series? It was fine, but you know, it it wasn't what they advertised it to be. And, and I think that right now Marvel, they needed better than fine. So uh, I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed, you know, that they, they went in, you know, they went all in on this like TV MA rating in the advertising. Uh, they used Daredevil and like the nostalgia for the Net Netflix era shows to advertise this show. And that's just not what the show was. It, it, it almost feels like the, the gruesome stuff, like all the blood and all that. It, it feels like that was added in like in reshoots because uh, a lot of this show it just felt like your your standard, you know, Disney Plus rating type show. The, this series, it it felt rushed. Um, I hate that they gave Echo magical powers. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little more. Yeah, let's talk on. Let's talk about that in a second. Just real quick on the yeah. TVMA thing. The only thing I saw in it that really struck me as brutal was Kingpin beating the guy in the alley. Fine, TVMA, um, and the the dude Vicky getting shot. You know, with blood coming out of his that, eyes. Other than that, I agree with you. It seemed pretty tame to me. That's all I can think of. Yeah. And both of those things, you know, the, the Vicky, the blood, you know, that could have been a pickup that they added in and that scene sure. uh, in the alley, you know, could have been shot later. Well, CGI blood squirting up from out of frame while he's beating the guy. Yeah. 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 The, and like the, the close up shot of the fist, you know, that could have just been, you know, a pickup, a pickup shot that they did later. And it, it felt, the show felt very Hawkeye, not Daredevil, but it's, mm. it's then like they decided, oh, Let's make it Daredevil instead. It just, it, it fell flat for me, and I, I was disappointed. And as I'll talk about a little bit later on, I think the big problem with the show is that it, you know, it had all the tools there, all the mechanics, it just needed more time and money. Heather, you have a lot of experience working uh, you know, with some of these characters. You're, you're, you're currently group editor of licensing at IDW. You've worked at Marvel and other places. What did you think of the Echo series? I, I enjoyed it. Is it my favorite of all the Marvel TV shows? No. Um, is it the worst thing that they've put out? Absolutely not. Uh, I think there's a lot to like about this show. Um, as a bit of a, a combat nerd, I thought you know the creative fighting in combat that they did with the motorcycle and the arcade you know mm -hmm. um and some of the camera shots were really really cool um and really fun i think you know uh their use of sound design you know kind of bringing you into maya's world and, and her perspective i thought was cool i wish they would have pushed it further i think things like a quiet place you know using deaf characters and and um how they they uh, perceive the world to tell the story was, you know, was done a bit better. I think they could have taken more from that, but I I do like the attempt. Um, I really liked the uh, how they really leaned into the indigenous culture and the people and like wove yes. that into the story. Yeah. I thought that was 
done incredibly well. Um, and, and with and cooperation of the yes, Choctaw Nation. Yeah, absolutely. Which, uh, they have a, a great featurette on uh, their YouTube channel about that, too. Yes, but, um, you know, it, it, it. I remember finishing the, the fifth episode and it was... I, kind of like that's it that's that's how it like it yeah. felt it felt flat it felt the stakes never felt fully established in that that final episode it it was over before it began almost it felt like to me and um you know the the producers the writers of the show have have spoken and been open that it was originally supposed to be six episodes and due to budget constraints they they lost an entire episode um mid that explains so much it, it really really does yeah. um and and it happened right at the tail end i believe of the writer's room so i think they had those first two three episodes like flushed and locked in and then while they were working on the ending they just kind of they went on strike i think so uh, or oh, not okay. on strike, but but um, it, it had to have been shot oh, before that. Oh, the budget but, was cut. But the budget was cut, and so they're well, episodes four and five, we got to figure it out. That makes total sense because one thing I was thinking when I watched it, and again, I'm going to talk about my complaints later on. But one thing I noticed was, wow, the production value on episodes, especially one and two, mm -hmm. the Daredevil fight, where it's this brilliant choreography, where they they use some uh, tricky camera tricks about every 45 seconds to make it look like there was no cut when there was a cut. But then you have that, you have the Middle Ages Alabama sequence with this giant scope. And I thought, man, they're really loading up this show. With episode four and five, all of a sudden, I thought, ah, oh, this is cheap. People are having conversations in rooms instead of doing things. But I thought, well, but TV budgeting doesn't work that way. You usually film everything at once. So what, that explains why it looks so cheap. Because when they were writing it, they wrote it chronologically and then they weren't adjusting those first few episodes. What was it in maybe those more expensive episodes that really stood out to you? Like you mentioned being a combat nerd. Um, are you into this character? Did the MCU transfer her well from comic to, from, from page to screen? Do you want to keep seeing her? I, I definitely love Maya Lopez uh, in the MCU. I think, you know, there's, I think, there's, there's, there's uh, no, no uh, secret that her original origination. There was a lot of controversy about her portrayal in the Native American history in the comics when she first came about. So I definitely love. I yes. didn't know that. Um, and uh, you know, I think when she was created, it was done with the best of intentions. But you know, uh, especially indigenous stories come best told from indigenous people. Of course. And having the Choctaw be so involved with this, um, I think really transformed her and brought her to life in such a very cool way. Like I'm very invested in Maya and her journey and her story and her people. I think all of that is very, very interesting to me. And I would like to know, I'm not sold on the powers. It is kind of weird, but I, but I do love the idea of the Native American legend being so much a part of, of sure. her story in this. Um, I like how they used that idea of her ancestors are echoing through her, right? Mm -hmm. To like bring bring mm -hmm. to her name. I thought that was Called really that in cool. episode two, by the way. Yeah. Yes, you did. <laughs> Call, yeah, called that real early. As soon as her power showed up, yeah. I was like, I know what's happening here. And we didn't watch, we didn't watch them all at once. We did them one at a time. Which is why I also thought that her grandmother was her aunt in the first episode of Breakdown. <laughs> well, I just, they the called Bonnie tree, her cousin, so it was I, very confusing. <laughs> well, but yeah, in the first, but Bonnie is her cousin, but she, she's like, you're like my sister, no, I'm your cousin. Right. And then I was like, oh, so Graham Greene must be her grandfather. Oh, no, by episode three, we're like, oh, I'm not her grandfather. Yeah. Like, who the hell is Biscuits? Who's Biscuits related to? We're on the, the group chat earlier, we thought that Biscuits was Bonnie and Biscuits had transitioned in the interim years. The oh family gosh. tree was confusing and it's not my fault for getting it wrong, okay? Yeah, sure, but, I could but, have researched, but I didn't want to cheat and look ahead. But I think we can all agree that Billy Jack is the best boy. Billy Jack was the best boy and it's so obvious what Marvel's really doing here, which is setting up the pet 100%. Avengers. 100%. I just don't, I think they, I don't, I don't know if Billy Jack will make it because they might have that old uh, Justice League of America Silver Age rule where it's like, well, you can't have characters with duplicate power sets who are on the same team, which 
would make sense for the comic editors to have that rule, but come to think of it, that was part of the Justice League of America bylaws, and it would make no sense for them to deny Supergirl entry simply because Superman had a similar power set. All they did was depower the League and make it seem like Batman was more important than he actually was. Okay, but I'm, okay, I'm gonna stop talking about powers in the DC universe, and specifically I wanna focus on the powers that were displayed in this episode. In the comic books, Echo's powers are to echo the actions of somebody else, whether they're a great fighter or a concert pianist. Um, that power set already exists in the MCU with Taskmaster, so they changed it for the show. Colton, what were your thoughts on Maya's powers in episodes four and I guess mostly five? I was just really disappointed in it. I mean, I'm I'm tired of glowy hands and uh, <laughs> beams of light. I, Echo has cool powers, the the mimicking ability that she has, and I I feel like they just kind of abandoned that. I, I would have loved to have seen like. You know, like in the Sherlock Holmes movies with um, RDJ, when he, like, analyzes a fight before he gets into it. Employ elbow block and body shot. I would have wanted to, uh, it would have been cool to see Echo do that, like, analyzing the fight pattern of her opponent and then her diving into that fight. You know, similar to, like, we've seen, like, with Daredevil, we'll see him use his, like, Echo location and, like, analyze the fight before he gets into it. That's what I wanted to see. I didn't want to see them giving a character that didn't even have these, you know, magical powers, magical powers. I, I thought this was supposed to be the more grounded area of the MCU. So I, I was disappointed that they felt the need to bring in additional superpowers that she didn't have in the comics. I, I think her powers in the comics were already cool enough and that they should have, like, amplified that instead of going to something else. Do we think that they're trying to make her a mutant? Like, is that, cause that's kind of was my read from this is that, I don't know, you know, they've, they've kind of gone all in that X-Men is coming. Right. And so and that was my thought. The first time I saw the glowy hands was, are we leaning mutant with Echo? I mean, God, I hope not. Um, and the reason I hope not is because one thing I found very refreshing is that they didn't over explain the Choctaw creation myth or the powers or anything like that. Like they weren't aliens who were buried inside the earth and came out. I, I don't want that explained. Like that's me, maybe it's just my personal opinion. I think as soon as they said that Thor was an alien and that Doctor Strange was tapping power from another dimension, they demystified the MCU and they made it smaller in a way. And I feel the same way about her being a mutant. We've theorized, we talked, like you said, we talked in our episode five video about Avengers versus X-Men. Would Maya have to choose a side? For me, it's almost not even important if she's a mutant. It's like, that's just like, I, if they want to put her on the X-Men, sure. But like you said, Colton, mm -hmm. it's kind of like with Shang-Chi. The Shang-Chi Kung Fu stuff was great. Shang-Chi getting magical powers. Why does he have magical powers? He's a master of Kung Fu. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. Heather, what do you think? I mean, did you think it worked in the narrative at least for that to happen? I think they... I think it worked within the story of the extent that they set it up with her ancestors, right? With the uh, origin story and how they came to be and, you know, uh, as we move down the line of her ancestors all the way to her. I think, you know, it didn't come from thin air. It was, it was set up through all the episodes. However, I do agree with Colton that I, I would prefer it to just be more street level grounded, you know, um, superhero badassery. Uh, which she is on her own. Like, I don't think... I think her having these superpowers undermines, like, how badass she just already is. I, I am all for her power coming from her ancestors. I think that would be very cool. But why does it have to be glowy hands? Why can't it be the power that she has in the comics? That, yeah. that have Show yeah. her ancestors doing the Echo thing, you know, mm -hmm. it, in their different, um, you know, battles and stuff. That would have been cool. Colton, I, I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. Just <laughs> A Brave Star <laughs> Funko Pop. Uh, I thought they were going to go into when they showed the uh, scene where her mom and she were in the car wreck. I thought her mom was going to like use the last of her life energy to keep her alive or something. Same. Yeah. I thought that, that would have been, been cool. very appropriate for the show mm -hmm. and for the themes they were introducing. They didn't do it. I wasn't on the staff. They had some great people on the staff, by the way. And mostly what I want to talk about later on is how I feel like what Heather said earlier is very true. The writers just didn't get the ingredients to cook. Um, 
the last episode, by the way, was also extremely short. It was only 30-something minutes long. Whenever you're in a Marvel yeah. show or a Star Wars show, you look at the last episode, it says 30-something minutes. Ouch. It's never going to be a good time. Um, what do we think, though, about the actual... I feel like the moment where she laid hands on Kingpin and entered his mind and tried to heal his soul, I feel like that was a concept that, to me, felt like they started with that. Like, they always knew she was getting to that point. And maybe in episodes four and five, they didn't get to complete the journey, but... What did you guys think of that moment? It took me a second to grasp what it was they were trying to do. Um, because, I don't know, it seems to imply that Maya was healed in an instant, right? Like, we let go of all of our past and all of our trauma, and 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 we're enlightened now, we're, and, and we've let it go, and we're not angry anymore, which um, is just hard to buy for me. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't know, it just, I don't, I, I struggled with it. I str struggled to understand what it was exactly that they were trying to do. Um, not to mention that it didn't work and then it just cut to a different scene afterwards. Like, I don't know, it, it just didn't land well, for me I got the feeling he, he just rejected it. You know, yeah. it's sort of how I, to quote the path of the hand, it was a gift freely given that he uh, rejected. Um, That's, yeah. So, Colton, what did you think about that moment when uh, feeling pity for Pierce Hawthorne? <laughs> I'm glad you got I, I, I loved it because, it, briefly going back to me complaining about glowy hands, I was scared that we were going <laughs> to get a big, just CGI battle mm -hmm. at the end of the the series which is kind of what they always do so i was glad they didn't do that i would have liked to have seen somewhat of a fight but i digress um but i i was i'm really glad that they went the route they did i i thought seeing vincent d'onofrio sitting on that bed of his childhood bedroom crying i that it gave me chills like just talking about it i i thought that was really well done i i loved the the idea of you know, Maya taking what she learned from her conversation with her mother to, you know, stop the fight and, and going like the path of the hero and trying to, to heal him. I thought that was cool. I liked the like imagery of, you notice she, she put the, her hands on his eye, but the scar is still there. Like going to your point mm -hmm. that he like rejected her healing. So I thought that was cool. I, I agree with Heather that it was, it felt a little rushed like how they just immediately cut to him getting in the car and but, but I did like him going what did you do that mm -hmm. that was really cool but I, I'll say this I prefer it over them just getting in some big like CGI slugfest so I I, I, I thought agree. it was better than that I think I think it all comes down to how rushed that last episode was mm -hmm. I think that if they had more time to sit with and like use that ability maybe once more on someone else or, you know, like something. Cause, cause also like, this is her first time ever doing that. So of course it's not going to work. Of course it's, <laughs> of sure. course it's not um, going to land, especially with someone with as much hate pent up as, as um, Pierce Hawthorne. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't, I, it's a nice thought that didn't land for me. Maybe even if they would have had a moment where she's tempted, if, if like, you know, we keep talking about budget constraints, et cetera, et cetera. If it just would have been, um, I don't know, her her aunt and her <laughs> her aunt and her cousin have powers, uh, so they fight the goons. So then she and Kingpin are just free to just hammer the hell out of each other, you know, to the point where Maya could have killed him, but then had to choose life or something like that. I, I again, like Heather, what you said about them cutting an episode and budget cuts in the last half makes total sense. And uh, you know, one thing I'm going to talk about later is just. Dumping it in one day, I think, was a major f you to yes. the show. And you're going to, yes. you know, stretch all these shows out and maybe occasionally drop them, you know, two episodes in one day. But then that just, to me, I wondered why they did that, and now I know why. It, it looks to me like they had no faith in the show whatsoever. They put it in January when nobody's paying attention. and that On a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. On a Tuesday night. On a Tuesday. Yeah. But again, like I said, I'm going to talk about that later when I get into all the negative stuff. Uh, Colton, by the way, never forget, is the guy who is trapped eternally in our, tiny, in our tiny television here, but he doesn't know it, so please don't tell him. And Heather Antos is group editor of licensing at IDW. All their social links are below. So now I want to tell you guys what I personally really didn't like about this show. 
First of all, Disney made a huge mistake when they released the entire season in one day. Back in 2019, Disney famously bucked the Netflix model of dumping and pumping their shows. Instead, they released The Mandalorian one episode at a time, so viewers would be able to talk about the show and look forward to the next one the following week. It's a little model we like to call regular television. So then when Disney decided to release Echo in a single day, it was sending a message that they didn't believe in the show, that they thought it sucked and they just wanted it to go away. Like we're kind of at a point with Marvel shows now where it feels like there's too much programming, people can't keep up and everything feels disposable. So releasing Echo in one day just reinforces that perception that the show feels disposable. Like imagine if they only gave us the first episode, right? People would have been talking about that Daredevil fight for a week, building momentum. Oh my God, you haven't seen Echo. You have to see the first episode. It's amazing. Amazing. But now people are going to just talk about those lackluster final two episodes and it's going to kill interest in the show. Oh, you didn't like episodes four and five? No, not as much. No, like episode four is when we really saw the limits of Marvel TV style. See, for years, Marvel has had this idea that instead of making traditional TV shows with a showrunner and pilot scripts, you know, the way TV shows have been made for almost a century, that instead they would make these mini movies and then just cut them up into chapters. Sometimes this worked well, like with Loki, but sometimes it really did not work well, like with movies. Moon Knight. But the problem is, in a TV show, the format exists to tell larger and more complex stories. A TV show can spend an entire hour focusing on just one side character, which you can never do in a movie. And like, their budget was clearly running out by the time they got to episodes four and five. For example, episodes one through three all had like giant set pieces. But in episode four, we're down to characters just standing still and talking to each other and explaining things to the audience. Like for instance, the conversation that Maya has with her grandmother. They're just sitting in a kitchen. They're not outside. They're not walking. They're not in nature because it's expensive to film scenes like that that are visually interesting. Also, like, look, it's sad that this woman lost her daughter and this actress does her best with the material, but this show has a lot of scenes where people are just describing how they feel. Look, instead of having characters tell us how they feel, the story should be showing us why they feel that way. Show scenes of her mourning her daughter or even better, have her confront Maya earlier in the series and tell her to leave town. Instead of like her talking to Black Crow about Maya needing to leave, she should have had that conversation with Maya to set dramatic stakes for this confrontation. Or maybe this conversation could have happened at a moment of physical duress while her grandmother was kidnapped. Like the show just needed more episodes and more money to become truly great. And this was not just a problem with her grandmother. All the supporting characters felt like placeholders you'd put in a pilot script that never get the time to be fleshed out. Like think of these characters. We never see them do anything that doesn't involve Maya. We don't know if Bonnie likes her life or why she became a firefighter or like how Black Crow tells us his family was killed. But that seems like something we really should have seen on screen, like in a longer season. So we would actually understand his motivations and fear. Instead, we're introduced to people. We learn a fun fact about them and then we move on. Biscuits is funny. Maya is a firefighter. Black Crow owns a skating rink. The level of characterization doesn't go far past who are the people in your neighborhood. And that is a shame because you can tell that they made some strong character Bibles here. Like in just a few scenes, we do feel sympathy for Black Crow. We are charmed by Biscuits, and we want Maya and Bonnie to reconcile. But we just needed more time and money for the show to go from good to great. Like, the show introduced some incredible ideas, but it was not able to go far enough. Like, the flashbacks of Maya's ancestors. Man, I would have loved to have seen entire episodes devoted to their stories. Like, show that Choctaw creation story with no dialogue, like that trippy episode from Twin Peaks The Return. Disney, buy these creators the ingredients and let them cook. See, Echo is one of the last casualties of the old Marvel system of making a TV show that's just a long movie cut into pieces. But the good news is they have learned from their mistakes. They scrapped Daredevil Born Again and they are starting fresh from a traditional approach. And that is what we want. Marvel, take your time. Give these stories the time and attention these characters and writers deserve. This show was good, could have been great, but I am still excited to see how Maya and her family can fit into the wider story of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But guys, what did you think about the show Echo? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let us know our thoughts in the comments below or add us on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.